Thank you for joining us at St. Joseph's Church, Takapuna, for Mass today. Today is the fifth Sunday of ordinary time in the Church's liturgical year. Our priest celebrant is Father Mark Napper, with Monsignor David Tonks concelebrating. Our God listens to the cries of the poor and into broken lives sent Jesus. His mission was performed with both words and actions, preaching good news that God was close to people and bringing healing to the sick and freedom to those constrained by demons. Living the gospel is now our charge and responsibility. Let's join in our gathering hymn. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, as we celebrate this sacred mystery, let us be aware of our need of God's forgiveness and mercy. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God. 
Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke to his friends. Do not human beings have a hard service on earth? And are not their days like the day of a laborer? Like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like laborers who look for their wages. So I am allotted months of em emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. The word of the Lord. Yes. from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, 
so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save, by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue in Capernaum, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother in law was in bed with a fever. They told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons. The whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick and with various diseases and cast out many demons. He would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place. There he prayed. Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone's searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, one of the many ways. I personally think to make people to believe and to follow Jesus is for them to see in us that we are people for others because Jesus is a man for others. Our gospel today shows that Jesus' ministry as, is as it, at its height his preaching was a success 
because he did not teach just like a scribe, but he taught them with someone with authority. Moreover, he has dramatically expelled a demon while they were in the synagogue. Everyone were astounded and amazed. But Jesus did not perform the miracles to impress people. He performed them to help others. He uses his healing power not for self-satisfaction, but to benefit others, a self-giving action. And notice how Jesus healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. He could have snapped his fingers and cured her from a distance. Instead, he follows Simon Peter over to the bed where his mother-in-law is lying, while listening to them as they tell him this, the history of her sickness. Then he bends down beside her, grasps her hand, and looks into her face. It is with that personal touch that he relieves her sickness. And then St. Mark points out, he even helped her to get up. And he had spent the entire evening of the Sabbath working miraculous, miraculous healings and amazing exorcisms. The next morning, his disciples must have been wild with excitement. They may have even thought that Jesus would claim the messianic kingship right away and gather an army to cast off the Roman occupiers. And so when they awoke, they find him gone from the house. And a growing crowd of townspeople clamoring to see him the disciples were confused. And so they frantically organized a search party and scour the area. And they find him alone in prayer on the mountaintop. And they, tell, they told him that everyone is looking for him. But Jesus' answer surprised them. He told them, it's time to move on, that his mission is not to expand his popularity, but to preach the gospel to all of Israel. This is what his father sent him to do, and no opportunity for mere personal glory will distract him from it. This was the first installment of a lesson that Jesus would teach over and over by words and actions. For he is not a political figure looking to climb the ladder of success. He is a servant, a messenger, a man for others. My dear brothers and sisters, in a world that tends to idolize success and achievement, the selfless, transcendent purpose of a person entirely focused on fulfilling God's will is like a bright light, a bright star shining in the darkness. In Jesus Christ, God comes to meet us in the reality of our humanity, bringing the light, the warmth of His divine light into its most darkest corners. Let us all profess our living faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Nourished by the Word of God and strengthened by His Holy Spirit, we come before the Lord with all our needs. For those who feel overwhelmed by life, that the Spirit of God will bring light to their darkness and hope to their hearts. For our country, as we celebrate Waitangi Day on Tuesday, and remember 184 years since the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, that God's blessing will enable us to be people of reconciliation, justice, mutual respect, and joy. For the many ethnic communities that call Aotearoa New Zealand home, that we may all contribute to the welfare, harmony, and unique history of our land. Loving and merciful Father, we surrender all our prayers into your hands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Amen. 
Created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help.
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, our Bishop Steve, our retired Bishop Pat, the Order of Bishops, all the ministers of the gospel, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered over the, the scattered throughout the, the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your glory. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bless the world with all that is good. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by His divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone, and have a blessed day. See you now.